Hello and welcome to the Hypnosis Academy. This week I thought that I'd give you some snippets from some past life regressions and some higher self work that I've done with the clients and some of the clients that have given me permission to be able to post uh, their experiences. So I'll share those with you. Probably in the work that I do, past life regression and higher self work is, is the most fascinating part although I did do a lot and so there was getting to a point where it was starting to become like work but it's fascinating because I have never had one experience identical to another never and I've never had um, you know an experience with a higher self that was exactly identical to somebody else's everybody's different everybody brings something different to this and so you never really know what it is that you're going to get when you do this work. You honestly never know. And especially now, more than ever, now uh, there's a shift that's happening. A lot of people are, are aware of a lot more things. There's a lot more information here. And so the experiences are far more diverse. And I think I've explained before, 50% of past life regressions do not go back to past lives, but rather to alternate lives or energetic lives or uh, things like that so it's it's we're in a different place now I mean it is as work if it's something that you like to do it's fascinating and it also gives people a lot of peace a lot of peace people tend to remember the past life regressions for the rest of their lives they remember them and they talk about them a lot you know uh, I, I talked with a lady here in Spain and she talked about her past life regression and she was uh, walking with Jesus and she said and I still have that video in my head with all of the feelings and it's as real now as it was then and that's very very typical very typical that especially portions of the of the experience stay with people this is very beautiful so I'll leave you a few snippets okay things that you can listen to there's no theme to it but fascinating anyway all right i love you all take care you said something which is something i hear a lot when we are in communication with higher self you said that she knows already and she just wants confirmation How is it that you communicate with her? How will she know that you were communicating with her? I'm with her always. It is the voice inside her. Ego stops her from listening. It tells her she is not special enough. How could this possibly be? You're not special. She is special. She is light. She knows this. She feels it. She doesn't know how to work it. She needs to meditate. That's all the questions that Rachel has, but I wonder if I might ask you, I think probably there's some things that Rachel needs to hear that will help her. What can you tell her that will help her that she needs to hear now? Procrastination is her worst trait. Putting it off, putting it off. She needs to try harder. Try harder. She can do it. She knows how. She just needs to try. It will be fine. You will do it. Settle down. It will come. Thank you. And before we, we finish, I wonder if there's a message that would be appropriate to offer other people, the rest of the world. Is there something that they need to know that might help them? We're nearly there. People are so tired, so worried. 
And it's not going though it should. We're nearly there. Have faith. That is all. Um, but what happens is if we if we lie to ourselves, then we lose the trust of our unconscious mind and it says, okay, so I don't believe you anymore. You know, when you say, right, tomorrow I'm going to do it. And then you get up and you pick your crochet up and you sit all day crocheting and you go, oh, shit, I didn't do it, you know? <laughs> um, the unconscious mind, uh, it just, it loses a bit of trust. It kind of goes in the huff. And so what, what happens is it says, okay, well, uh, I'm not going to give you any energy to do it because I've done it before. I've given you the energy and you've gone and used the energy somewhere else. So I'm not going to give you the energy. Okay. But then what happens is that it's, I mean, it loves you and it wants you to do it. So it waits. And what happens is you have to take the first step and it's the first, that's why they say the first step is always the most difficult because mm -hmm. it's the one where you don't have the energy to do it. Because you, still do it. you do it and you find the energy, you pull it from other places and the unconscious mind's waiting. As soon as it sees that you've done it and you've shown that you're going to do it, then it'll give you the energy. It's a wooded room, almost like a study. Mm -hmm. um, lots of books, lots of brown wood. Um, it's a expensive place. It's something of uh, a high stature, maybe. Uh -huh. um, but I don't know if I live there or if I'm supposed to be, I feel like I'm not supposed to be there. There's someone that doesn't like me, a woman. Okay. Do you have a sense of what relationship that woman is to you? I feel like I'm a servant, but my clothes aren't right for that. Okay. Um, like I'm obstinately bowing down to someone. Okay. And you don't like that? I don't. I'm doing it out of obligation. Mm -hmm. I don't respect this person, whoever it is. I don't respect her. Okay. I get the feeling that I'm her toy. Ah like a plaything, and she's laughing at me. Okay. Like she's gonna make me do things for entertainment. Right. Do you get a sense of what people call you in this life? girl <laughs> that's the only thing that that's the only thing that came to mind was get the girl okay okay like i've been kidnapped or taken and it's not they're not hurting me mm -hmm. And I say they, there's, there's now a guy there with her, a man, okay. like it's funny entertainment. Like I'm doing things that I don't want to do. So they think it's funny. I think maybe I do have some kind of stature and that's why this is hard. Uh -huh. Like I'm supposed to be living a better life but they've taken me and they're making me do these demeaning things. Okay. 
Okay. For some reason, that really makes me mad. Is there anything, any message that you would like to give to Joe? Anything that she needs to hear that's important right now? She's doing really well. She doesn't have to try so hard. We are proud of her. <laughs> so proud. We love her. We, we, we love you. We love you. Thank you. So. And I can feel that beautiful connection that's there between you and Joel, between you all and Joel. And that's very beautiful to see that connection, that, that emotional connection. And I'm sure that Joel can feel that as well in her life. I sense them all the time and think it's just me imagining it, but now I can feel it's the same when I'm awake. Okay. I talk to them a lot. And before we we bring this to a close, I would ask if it's possible uh, that I might be able to ask Joe's higher self a couple of questions, general questions. Would that be okay? Would you be willing to answer some? Okay, thank you. These days, there are many people who are waking up and, and who are going through a process of, a very difficult process of understanding what is actually happening around them. What advice might you have for those people who are, who are recently awakened that might help them just need to look not glance you need to look to see what's happening people are jumping up around you and you don't see it's time to look that's all. Okay, thank you. And what advice would you have to these people who've awakened because there's so much information out there and lots of information that contradicts itself? What advice would you give the people? You say that they need to look, but how can they look well? Do they have to trust what they see and feel, they have to trust it. If it feels right to them, then it's going to be right. They need to trust themselves. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. 